thank you um, for coming tonight to the uh, BIA's AGM. Uh, I think I've probably met most of you. I don't see you, so I can't tell whether I have. I'm Maria Drangova, and I represent the London Clay Art Center um, on the on the board, and I'm also the the chair of the board. I've been in this position for um, several several cycles now. It's been a while. So um, I have the pleasure of chairing this meeting, and it's of course a little bit different than than what we are normally used to in the distillery or the Aeolian Hall. Uh, but we are going to try and go through some boring material first, uh, which is the business section, and uh, I will. Uh, start by, uh, I'm going to remind everyone that we're going to have a couple of votes as we go forward. The first one, if we can um, put up the, um, the agenda, or is it up? I think I need to get it's someone up. to move the start of the meeting. It's up? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, the way we're going to do the voting today, if you have not participated in Zoom meetings before, um, at the bottom of your screen, there are uh, some, some icons and you, we're going to ask you to go to the participants icon. And when you're there, you should be able to click. Gabrielle, you might want to uh, let people know because I'm Uh, okay, so there, some people are saying they're in the meeting, but their video is not activating. I'm assuming that that's intentional for now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Correct. So if you're the only people you're going to be seeing are the people um, on the board and the staff of the BIA who are, um, who are um, going to be delivering material, you'll all have opportunities to, to speak through the question and answer uh, box that's down at the bottom. And uh, Gabrielle Gillespie, who's hiding somewhere as our webinar wizard, uh, is going to be pulling the strings and making sure that everything happens. So Gabrielle, I'm, I'm having trouble finding the raise hand um, icon at the bottom, which normally comes as a participant. Can someone try and raise their hand so that I could see if it's working for people? Darlene just raised her hand. Excellent, thank you, Darlene. Darlene. Okay. okay, so everybody who's uh, a guest at the meeting, so those would be all the attendees, uh, you can, when we ask you to vote for something, uh, please use that function, which is at the bottom um, of, of your screen uh, to raise your hand and that will let us know if you're supporting something or not, or if you wanna ask a question, it's just like, uh, uh, raising your hand in, in normal routine. So the first order of business, if we put up the agenda, is that we would like to approve the um, agenda. Uh, so can someone move and second the approval of the agenda, please? We have Grant Malman and um, I, I don't see all the guests raised hand. So oh, uh, Chris Stroud. So I should, I should really remind, um, I hope that we have some people on the call who are not just business owners or property owners, but only business owners and property owners can vote and can make motions. So if you're just an oldies village BIA um, supporter, we thank you for, for participating in the meeting. But um, if you'd like to vote, you only have to be in uh, a business owner or a property owner on the uh, within the BIA. So uh, we had a mover and seconder for the agenda. And are there any who are opposed? So to make this simple, I'm not going to ask people if they're in favor. I'm only going to ask if anybody's opposed. So again, pre please use that raised hand. Um, and we're going to see for a minute if you're in favor or opposed. All right, so I'm going to assume that the agenda is good as it goes and we'll continue um, continue on. So our um, next item on the agenda is going to be a, a, a brief introduction by our counselor, uh, Jesse, Hel Jesse Helmer. He's uh, 
served as counselor uh, for Ward 4 for uh, one and a half terms now, and, and uh, he's just completing his term as um, deputy mayor. We thank him for all the support that he's given the BIA over the, um, the years, and hopefully we'll continue to do. Uh, so Jesse, uh, please go ahead and uh, give us your message. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Maria. And <clears throat> I think you said at the beginning, we're gonna start with the boring stuff and that's definitely my uh, specialty. I get tapped for the boring, uh, boring parts. Um, I wanna just say, um, I don't think any of us last year uh, could have imagined everything that's gonna transpire between our last AGM and now, um, how the world would kind of be turned upside down uh, because of the pandemic. And I, I think this particular area of the city, because of the nature of the businesses, you know, the unique food, arts and culture organizations that are in this area, a lot of independent uh, operations has been hit particularly hard uh, by the pandemic, just the nature of the businesses that are in this area. Um, <clears throat> got, of course, the uh, construction project on top of that. And many of the impacts that have hit the people who are experiencing homelessness also very hard, you know, places that people used to be able to go inside uh, during the day, not available anymore. Uh, a lot of service disruption happening there as well because of the pandemic and an increasing number of people uh, out on the street and people have many overlapping issues and are, and are suffering quite significantly. So there's been a lot of things uh, going on in our community and, and certainly in the commercial corridor. And I wanna recognize that this has been a very a tough year for everybody, you know, for people who are sleeping in parking lots, for business owners who are trying to run their business um, while they're able to be open, keep their customers coming around, uh, for residents who you know, your whole lives have just been disrupted, your usual shopping habits are not happening anymore, uh, you can't see your friends or your family the way you'd like to, uh, there's just no way to make it sound like a good year, it's just sucked, and it's just how much has it sucked uh, for, for everybody. Um, I want to recognize uh, Jen uh, for her work uh, as the manager of the BIA. She has been a tireless advocate um, throughout, especially the pandemic response. In the early days, we had the mayor's uh, impact um, and recovery task forces, both on the economic side and on the social side. And Jen was a very active participant in all those discussions, really bringing uh, the perspective of the members of the BIA uh, to those discussions. You know, when we did things like defer the repayments of the incentive loans. You know, that's an idea that comes from Jen, uh, comes from the business owners in this area. They say, hey, this would help. Um, when we're putting off property tax payments to give people a little bit of space and some cash flow uh, relief, uh, you know, that's because we were hearing from people, uh, Jen included, about how important that was, uh, not just for residents, but for businesses as well. Um, you know, I don't think we've got everything right as we're trying to figure these things out, but I can tell you that it's been well-informed because of the work of uh, everyone at the BIA and Jen in particular. Um, Jen and I are each co-leading two of the groups that are working on the Community Recovery Network. So Jen is the co-lead for the uh, core area priority action table. And so that's not just our area, but also a downtown. Many of the issues as you can imagine are, are very similar. Um, and I'm the co-lead for the readiness and resilience uh, action table, which is about how do we mitigate the future waves, right? We're in another one now and there's gonna be more. Uh, this is not a short pandemic, unfortunately. Um, and I do wanna say that despite how difficult it has been and um, how tough things are right now, that there really is hope for the future. Um, I think we're seeing just how resilient people really are uh, and the kind of hits that they can take and keep going. Um, and I know that it's very frustrating and that uh, people's patience is kind of wearing thin. People are a bit chippy. Um, everyone is a little bit on edge and that's understandable. This is, not, this is not fun and the prolonged nature of it is really draining. But I do think we're gonna get through it uh, together. I think frankly, our area is very well positioned because of the great people who are working in this area, who live in this area. Um, and we're gonna bounce back uh, really strongly if we work together and we're we're kind with each other even when it's really difficult because um, we're not going to agree on everything. Uh, we all get different kinds of issues, but uh, we certainly are not going to 
uh, do very well if we're all going off in different directions and there's not a common purpose and, um, and cooperation. So I think we've got that going in our neighborhood. I think we've got a lot of great people in this area. I want to thank you for everything that you're doing in the BIA, running your business, you know, elsewhere in the community. Uh, I just think I've seen a lot of great things from Londoners and I've certainly seen it here in, in Old East Village. So that's it for me. Um, great to see everybody. Hopefully we can see each other in person uh, for the next one. Thank you, Jesse. Those were uh, uh, very nice words and very optimistic. I, I think you, you hit the nail on the head uh, in identifying us as a very resilient um, community. And, and uh, um, we are going to get through this. And the work that the BIA is doing is certainly supporting um, all our um, businesses. So uh, next, uh, we are going to remember times that were better. Um, last year, uh, we held our AGM at um, the distillery. Uh, and uh, we're going to try and remind ourselves of that by looking at the minutes. And Gabrielle, who's in charge of the, the slides, is going to uh, sort of slowly um, put them up again. All of the people who are property owners or business owners would have received a package uh, from the BIA ahead of this meeting with all this material in it. Uh, so it should be um, fairly um, clear to you. Well, I mean, you probably don't need a lot of time to look through these uh, minutes, but we are going to have to vote mm -hmm. on them. Um, and I believe this is, uh, the end of the minutes. So if uh, I could have uh, someone move to approve the minutes from the 2019 um, AGM by putting your hand up, that would be appreciated. We have Ellie Cook and someone second. A little blue hand, don't be shy. Rob Campbell, thank you. Um, if uh, anybody is opposed to, um, now you can lower your hands because I know you're not opposed, but if anybody is opposed uh, to approving these minutes, please put your hand up. I don't see any, any opposition. So we're gonna move on uh, to the next, next section. And uh, this section is actually a reintroduction of the board members whom you already know. Um, we have uh, uh, several new board members that are joining the board, but we need to approve the board um, in, as such uh, for going forward. Um, I remind you the, that we're presenting the board as a slate uh, for voting. So we will be voting uh, on the entire list that you see up on the slide uh, rather than individual uh, people. And we will not be taking nominations from from the floor, uh, just so that uh, you know who you're uh, supporting and voting for, I'm going to go through the uh, through the names, um, and I believe our our wizard Gabrielle is going to uh, put everybody's uh, face up so that you can see who they are. So, as I said at the beginning, um, I'm the chair. Um, from um, my name is Maria, and I'm from the London Clare Centre. Uh, the vice chair of the board uh, is Henry Easterbrook, and he represents uh, the Intercommunity Health Center. Hi. Uh, Henry, Henry is there. He's got two videos, two, two connections up, so uh, you may not be seeing him. Uh, Rob Campbell uh, is, um, has been uh, nominated by, by the board to be the new treasurer. And I suspect Jen will have uh, kind words to say about our past treasurer later on in the um, in the program. Um, Rob is a business owner, uh, a property owner on uh, Dundas Street. Uh, Heather Blackwell is a director. Is Heather there? Uh, she represents the Western Fair District, and he she has been. Um, with the board for, for nearly 20 years, if not longer. Um, John Parlo is a, a director. Uh, he represents Whistling Dick's Barbershop. Jamie Sin, uh, Sinden 
is uh, joining us from Love Alchemy, uh, the organic salon. We have, uh, hi Jamie, Grant Maltman, Maltman uh, the director of Banting House National Historic Site. Hi Grant. Liliana Sanchez is uh, rejoining Oldies Village. She's been on the board for a couple of years um, and she's from totally unique custom design. Ellie Cook uh, is a property and business owner uh, representing the root cellar. Uh, and now we come to uh, the new people, uh, Chris Shroud, rep representing Bread and Roses Books. Hi, Chris, welcome to the board. Thank you. Uh, Kimberly D'Souza uh, from Libro. Welcome, Kimberly, and welcome, Libro. We're very excited. Uh, and Michael uh, Hersher from Homemade Kolache, and that sounds yummy. So I'm going to come and taste some soon. Uh, so uh, Chris, Kimberly, and Michael are our new member, members of the board. And last but not least, uh, Jesse Helmer is our municipally elected representative. So this is the um, board slate as uh, the board would like to present to you for approval. So if I could ask uh, someone uh, to nominate, the, I mean, vote, uh, move that we approve the board as presented by raising your hand. Darlene, it looks like Darlene and Mary. All right, excellent. And again, I'm going to ask for uh, opposition to be expressed by raising your hand. All right, so I'm going to assume that there's unanimous support of the board as presented. Uh, thank you all for, for this. Thank you to the board members for, for willing to uh, dedicate time and effort to, uh, to the board and thank you for everyone uh, for having trust in, in the people that are representing you and, and working in the background. Uh, for the Oldies Village BIA. All right, so next we're getting into the money part. Um, so this would be the, the um, proposed budget for 2021. Uh, again, this would have been in your AGM package. Uh, so you should have in principle had uh, time to review it, but we are going to post it on the, on the slides and you will be able to um, you'll be walked through the, through the budget by uh, Rob Campbell, the, the treasurer. And we also have Nick Lai uh, with us, who's the um, bookkeeper uh, who can answer the questions. Uh, we're gonna go through it first and you can ask questions afterwards. Uh, there's a, just to remind you at the bottom, there's a question and answer um, button, click that and type your questions in there and one of the panelists will answer, uh, most likely Rob or Nick. Uh, and I, I do remind you that this budget is being presented, it's been approved by the board and we're not going to take a vote on it. We're not expected to vote on it as a, as a community. Uh, but uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them now or you could ask questions uh, later um, in the next uh, week or so, Jen will tell you exactly the, uh, the timeline over which we, uh, you can ask questions or make suggestions um, if you uh, would like anything explained further uh, before it gets submitted to the city. So I'm going to ask Rob. Actually, go on, Jen, you're muted. Jump in here for a second. Actually, Rob's driving, so it will be me and Nick. Ah, okay. I guess you're right. I did see Rob Rob driving. Yes. Yeah. So please go ahead. So I'll speak to the first part that you had mentioned before um, about, um, let me just see here, that uh, we'll go through the budget. There's a couple of things I'm going to highlight that are specifically different this year than other years. Uh, also, I want to make sure that people are aware that, um, that this AGM is going to be 
posted on our website. So if you lose track of the email, you will be able to find these documents again. Uh, and you will have until the 9th uh, to provide us with comments or questions or recommendations. Um, and then we will be submitting our full uh, draft budget to the City of London for, for review on uh, November the 13th. Um, so this is up, this budget is here for discussion, uh, for feedback. Um, a couple of things that I'm going to go through. We try to keep the document as simple as possible. Um, as you will see, there is a COVID budget uh, column, which is not a normal column. Um, in um, it, During the summer, the City of London asked all boards of, of the municipality to uh, create their own COVID contingency fund. So to look at budget lines that perhaps were not being utilized because of COVID, because of the shutdown and allocate those to um, perhaps services or supports that would best provide to your membership during this time. So we transferred things into the digital marketing fund, uh, the graffiti removal. Um, uh, there's a marketing initiative with SWATC and um, sort of Southwestern Ontario Tourism and uh, Tourism London. Uh, and then an additional budget that has been made available in case of any unexpected costs come up that we could allocate to support business. Um, as you'll see in 2021, there is not a identified COVID budget line, um, but uh, if you can scroll down, um, uh, Gabrielle, to the second page, thank you, um, you will see that there is an, an amount of money that has been allocated uh, to COVID supports over and above the existing marketing budget, beautification budget that has always been in our budget lines. Um, those things still exist. And then there is the $12,000 that is over and above that for costs that we will be able to, um, costs incurred to support businesses during this time. We don't know what those look like yet. We're trying to figure that out, what recovery is gonna look like, but we wanted to have funds available for that. Otherwise, um, as the budget lines state, uh, they're very clear. If you notice 2020 budget and 2021 budget is almost identical with, the ex with a couple of exceptions, um, but those exceptions are noted in the budget changes column. So um, Nick, is there anything else you wanted to include in that? No, nope, you got it pretty much always. It is just the, the highlighting the fact that the COVID-19 budget line that you see under 2021 proposed budget is made up entirely of money that was moved forward from this year's money that was set aside specifically for COVID, as well as money that we didn't spend all the way to the budget on our normal spending. We moved that money forward as well. So any underspends from our traditional budget, we moved forward into 2020 one in order to have a larger COVID-19 budget. Excellent. So we're happy to open it up for any questions. Um, and if you don't have a question now, like I said, you will have access to the document either through the package that we provided or once it's posted on our website. So, um, you know, it's not your last chance to ask questions, but we're hoping we're happy to, to field any at this time. Sorry. Okay, I don't see any questions. If any pop up, uh, we'll note them down and, and Jen, Nick or, or Rob will get uh, back to you with, uh, with details and answers to those questions. Uh, just send them to uh, info at oldiesvillagebia.com. And if any pop up throughout the rest of the meeting, we will might we might have a bit of time. We can address them then too. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you both for uh, presenting the budget. And as I said before, we don't need to vote on this. Uh, it's strictly for information purposes, which of course is um, great because we're now going to stop having the dry section of the meeting um, and try and uh, talk a little bit about what's happened over the year and, and uh, some positive aspects of life in, in the uh, Oldies Village. And of course, there is no better way to get into the next section of, of the meeting than uh, to announce the uh, uh, first two door, door prize winners. Uh, we, uh, I guess you, you know that as, when you registered, you were entered into a draw uh, for uh, four door prizes of, of 50 construction dollars each. And the, uh, I don't have a drum roll, but I, I will pretend the uh, 
first door prize winner is Shane Butcher. Congratulations, Yay. Shane. Yay. And the second one is Bella Kim. Congratulations. Ah. We'll uh, hear the, uh, the other two um, winners uh, later on in the program. And uh, just to get everyone a little more relaxed, I'm going to um, ask that, that we move into the musical section of the, um, of the program. Today we have a couple of uh, fab fabulous music acts, uh, both local. And uh, first we're going to welcome Taylor Holden and Natalie Shore. Addicted to Anna's older brother. He's got eyes like no other. Charming like a James Dean dream. And I'm just 17. I'm addicted to Anna's older brother. But he's got lies like no other. So he takes me out. That was fantastic. I, I would like to thank them in person, but uh, I guess we had this uh, recorded. I hope everyone enjoyed this. Uh, you would have noticed that we had a, a poll pop up on your um, on your screen. Um, please please uh, respond to the questions. Um, choose your top uh, your top three, and only business owners and property owners can uh, can vote on this poll as well. Uh, so I think uh, this is now going to bring us to some staff updates. And uh, first um, on our updates, we uh, have an update on construction and uh, Kylie is going to do that. Uh, Kylie is a new staff member at uh, the BIA. Uh, she was hired to specifically cover communications related to construction. 
and in my opinion has done a fantastic job so <laughs> thank you yeah. all right yes instruction great okay so my name is kylie um i've been working with the bia since april 2020 and since then, we have prioritized our online presence, focusing on Facebook, our website, MailChimp, and more recently, Instagram. So we have partnered with several reputable brands for our Facebook and Instagram page, which includes the City of London, Tourism London, Western Fair District, and Downtown London. Each of our partners have allowed us to expand our reach to a wider audience. For Facebook, I've actively managed our page where we post business highlights, contests and giveaways, construction updates, and blog posts. We have accumulated 489 followers to date. Our Facebook page is prioritized as a resource for business owners and community members to stay up to date with the construction project and business hours and promotions. However, through our collaborative videos and marketing materials with the City of London, we are now targeting individuals outside of OEV to come on down and discover the amazing local businesses in OEV. So for our website, we keep it updated regularly and feature businesses through our blog posts, and we promote our own programs, which include Shop to Win and Construction Dollars. We contribute the success of our website to an extra staff member, the launch of Core Area Construction Dollars Program, our Shop to Win program, many website updates, and our bi-weekly newsletters. So speaking of newsletters, the BIA transitioned to MailChimp in April. Uh, here we consistently send our subscribers and our business list updates on the businesses and the construction site. If you are interested in joining our mailing list, just please contact us at info at oldeastvillage.com or fill out a form through our website. And lastly, the BIA has recognized the importance of Instagram as an office while acknowledging that we needed a bit of extra help to get our account launched. So the BIA hired Gabrielle Gillespie and she has helped us build a strong following along with months worth of content for us to use. On our Instagram account, we highlight businesses, we post giveaways and construction updates, and we promote any events or activities that are happening in OEV. So next for my construction communications update, I have also been working closely alongside city staff to prioritize pedestrian access, general accessibility and supporting all modes of transportation. As for the construction project, phase one from Hewitt to Rectory is estimated to be complete by mid-November, partly due to the unforeseen utilities that were found underground and because of the COVID-19 pandemic that interrupted the supply of new streetlight poles that were custom designed for this specific project. The first layer of asphalt, however, has been poured from Hewitt to Rectory, so the project is getting closer and closer to being completed. In terms of supporting all modes of transportation, myself and Jen have been in frequent contact with city staff to ensure that bike racks, pedestrian crossings, and signage have been present on the corridor during construction. We advocated for businesses are open signage on Queens pointing commuters to the municipal parking lots off of English and Elizabeth Street. These initiatives have all focused on making OEV accessible during construction. We have also been working closely alongside city communications staff to develop marketing strategies to encourage customers to visit OEV during construction. There is a long list of marketing initiatives that the city helped us with which includes radio ads, digital billboards for promoting construction dollars, shop to win and our hand hashtag campaign, pedestrian navigation signage, uh, graphic design work, social media bo boosts and promotions, videos, which one is expected to come out tomorrow and email updates. So just lastly, for supporting phase two of construction in 2021, we're making the businesses aware that the BIA will be working with city staff to prepare for 2021 construction. Tools will again be made available for businesses to use through their social media, promotion through radio, billboards and multimedia will continue and there will be a 2021 construction dollar program again. The BIA is working with city staff to create easy access to municipal parking lots for events and promotions. And we will continue to work with Jim Yanchula 
project and business relations manager, and Johnny Nye, construction project manager, to provide one-on-one -on -one business support through the second phase of construction. So then I just have a few pictures to demonstrate the initiatives that I previously spoke about. So here are some of the pedestrian cycling and vehicle navigation strategies that have been implemented in collaboration with the City of London. Next, this project map here was created with the help of the City Comm staff to ensure that businesses feel supported during construction. And this will be continued for impacted businesses during phase two of construction in 2021. And just lastly, I've also included some of the city promotions that have completed to date. Uh, just to demonstrate, I've also included one of our radio ads that's currently running that was created in collaboration with the city. leave it to Nicole to introduce herself and her initiatives. Thank you. Thanks, Kylie. Uh, so hi, everyone. I'm Nicole Borland, and I'm going to be providing an update on ongoing and new initiatives, as well as a brief funding update. Um, so to start with, we're going to talk about ongoing programs. Uh, so coordinated informed response. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, this program is a partnership between the City of London, London Police, and London Cares to help mitigate the impacts of street activity on particular areas and offer support to those who are engaged in it. The OEVBIA examines the Dundas Corridor on a daily basis to ensure businesses, organizations, and vacant properties are receiving the necessary support to, as mentioned, mitigate the negative impacts of that street activity. This has been a very challenging year in terms of street activity in OEV, as it has been largely exacerbated by the COVID-19 shutdowns. Since the beginning of 2020, the OEVBIA has made 466 reports and requests for support to the City of London's informed response team, and this accounts for 636 individual incidents. Jen will speak more to the advocacy portion um, and, and efforts that are based on these numbers uh, later on in her section. Uh, next is the City of London Financial Incentives Program. Uh, this program offers interest-free loans to business and property owners in the designated BIA boundaries in order to upgrade the interior and exterior of buildings to achieve ongoing revitalization in the area. To date, more than 50 properties in OEV have utilized this, these programs, and there are currently several major projects underway on the Dundas Corridor. Uh, next, there is Shop to Win. Uh, this program offers customers, and that's a picture there on the right, uh, customers at participating businesses to a chance to win one of two prizes of $500 in construction dollars after making a purchase and filling out a ballot. We have 25 plus businesses participating in this program, which will run through October and November of this year, uh, creating a further incentive to shop local, especially during the holiday season. Um, as well, we have the Digital Main Street program. Uh, so this is funded through OBIA, which is the Ontario BIA Association, and they continue to offer Main Street businesses $2,500 grants to improve their digital footprints. To date, we have had 14 successful applicants in OEB. And so moving on to some new programs and supports, uh, there's the Dig OEB Digital Marketing Fund. Uh, this offers OEB businesses a chance to apply for micro grants of up to $100 to put towards digital marketing promotions on social media. We've had eight businesses take part in the program so far, and it will be available until the funding runs out. 
Uh, and as well, they're new this year, there's the Small Business Center Main Street Retail Grant Program. Uh, this was in response to COVID-19. Uh, the Small Business Center offered this program to Main Street businesses to cover costs of recovery, as well as to scale up and expand their businesses. With only 14 spots available in London, or sorry, available London wide, the BIA facilitated the acceptance of five OEB businesses into this program. Uh, next, we have the facade beautification program, which again, here on the right, you can see some of the most recent completed examples. Um, so in May, the OEB BIA received funding from the city to beautify board boarded storefronts due to COVID-19 closures. We've had seven murals by local artists who live, work, and or have a connection to OEB uh, completed so far, and there is one more on the go set to be completed very shortly. Uh, this program has received immensely positive feedback from the community, artists, property owners, and business owners. And then lastly, for new programs, we have our graffiti removal program, which another example here um, on the left. So this program offers 50% coverage of the cost of professional graffiti removal, and that's up to $250 uh, per property. Uh, if we are unable to remove it ourselves with the products that we have on hand, which we've uh, engaged in quite a bit this summer. Um, and so for this program or any of the programs mentioned, if uh, your business or your property, if there's interest and you'd like to discuss further, you can feel free to uh, reach out to me to discuss the uh, still available programs at uh, Nicole at oldiesvillage.com. So next, um, we wanted to point out uh, the grant funds that have been contributed to OEV uh, businesses. Uh, towards the end of 2019 and into 2020, as some of the programs bled over to the next year. So uh, between those four grant programs there, um, the total number so far is $57,925 that has gone directly to OEV businesses. So we are very, very happy um, about that and do want to see the number to continue to grow. And then just lastly, um, I'm going to talk about a few projects and promotional supports, um, starting with the LDN Ent organization, a partnership that we developed in the summer. Um, so this is a promotional organization, and we partnered with them to photograph and promote OEV businesses. This offered exposure to more than 1,500 people of different audiences on an array of uh, social media channels, and it also provided professional photographs uh, by local photographer Whitney South of the business owners, um, and this is something that we plan to do some more of in the future. So that's an example there on the left with Yeme from So Inviting. Um, content creation. Since March of 2020, we began publishing one to two weekly blog posts, which highlight individual businesses, uh, themed lists, event promotion, news, and informational posts on construction and the neighborhood. Uh, since then, they have generated more than 5,000 page views. And those are some, uh, just an example of some of the photos um, on the right there that uh, have been taken by staff members for these articles in specific. Um, and then I'm just going to end off with um, an exciting bit on, uh, Jen mentioned it briefly and we'll talk a little bit more about it after, but we're currently working on a very exciting video project with a local production company that's going to act as a sort of commercial for OEV, showcasing all of the very unique um, uh, opportunities to eat, shop, and play here in Old East Village. So expect to see more of that uh, for the video itself, as well as a content series towards the end of November. And Jen will speak more to the partnership aspect of that. Um, so I guess now I have a, a few more prize winners to announce. So this is for the $50 in construction dollars. Uh, so Shane Butcher put his his uh, his dollars back into the mix. Thank you, Shane. That's very generous. Um, so we have three winners to announce, and that's Andrew Sircombe, Kelly Goff, if I'm saying that correctly, and Janae Hodder. 
So congrats everyone. And we have your email information. So we will we'll, uh, organize uh, getting those to you. Um, and as well, I will just remind everyone that we will have another poll coming up. So as we enjoy the next musical act, please do check out that poll and um, answer that to the best of your ability. And so now we will turn to the musical stylings of Henry Easterbrook and Frank Risdale as Hank and Frank performing Walk Like a Zombie. Hello there. This is Hank, Hank and Frank. Uh, we're going to do an old song that we we uh, wrote years ago, but we added a verse to just to keep up with the times. And it's a, a song about uh, Halloween. Uh, Halloween song. It's called Walk Like a Zombie. It's scary, so watch it. Don't, uh, don't get too scared. So here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Walking through the graveyard one cold October night When I came upon the headstone of Earl Strike I popped his hand, I popped his head He took one look at me And this is what he said, he said Walk like a zombie, play it back yeah sure let's see okay thank you so much uh hank and frank you played at our past few agm so i'm so glad you were able to contribute a new version of your song to us today um hello everyone thank you for taking time with, to be with us tonight. Uh, 2020 has definitely been the year of business as unusual. In January of this year, the BIA created a detailed strategic calendar, which would mainly serve to support businesses during construction. We launched the first blog, blog of this strategy on March 6th about Phil and the Strings Guitar Shop and Cafe. The next week, the whole nation changed. The BIA never stopped working throughout the pandemic. I worked from the office while staff worked from home. 
During this time, we hired Kylie full-time for communications and Gabrielle part-time for content creation. Or tonight, she's known as our webinar wizard. Uh, plus, Nicole Borland was on board the entire time as our projects and programs coordinator. The BIA has been privileged to have such a fine team during these difficult times. Very quickly, we realized the Old East Village was challenged by three things simultaneously, COVID, construction, and an increase in street involved activities. So over the course of this year, the BIA has done the following over and above all of the amazing work that has been, uh, has been talked about already. Very early in the pandemic, predicting the large number of boarded up bu businesses due to COVID closures, we advocated for and received from the City of London Core Area Action Plan funding to beautify uh, temporary facades during this time. As Nicole mentioned, we worked with eight amazing area connected muralists to create the artwork you see on the street today. Also related to the Core Area Action Plan, the BIA advocated utilizing funds and moving forward projects that would assist core area businesses during construction. Additional and evening street cleaning, hotel rooms for some of our most uh, cities most vulnerable on our streets to access and stay safe, and the implementation of the Core Area Construction Dollar Program. The Core Area Construction Dollar Program was initially created to support businesses during construction, but it has proved a worthy, a worthy of double duty, assisting businesses during both construction and COVID. To date, $30,000 has been specifically allo allocated to participating businesses with other dollars going into promotional opportunities to circulate the dollars. All businesses are hosting contests, giveaways, or purchase promotions. Currently, there are 38 area businesses who are participating by accepting, distributing, uh, or distributing construction dollars or both. But these dollars do expire at the end of the year. So be sure that you are circulating those dollars and, and their dollars are being spent. 20 construction dollars in your wallet is no good to a business and same as unused or uncirculated dollars behind business counters also uh, are not helpful. We need to get those dollars out there and circulating. We're all experimenting with this program right now. Um, and we are going to get another batch of funds for phase two of construction, but we need to know the shit. We need to make sure the city knows that this has been helpful to you, that you've embraced it, and that we're working very hard to make sure no money's left on the table. So promote your businesses and the dollars very loudly to ensure that the program is a success for future years. As described earlier, the BI made strong advances in our digital media profile in order to support, promote, and promote businesses this year. Gabrielle launched our Instagram to much success. Gabrielle maintains, I'm sorry, Kylie maintains, pop, uh, populates our DigoEV Facebook and website regularly with promotions and COVID updates. And Nicole has written timely, resource filled, and promotional blogs weekly since March. Again, as Nicole mentioned, we've expanded our partnership with Tourism London and Southwestern Ontario Tourism to include an only in OEV promotional video created by Hungry Boy Productions, expected to launch in December. We are very excited about this, so please stay tuned. And finally, we're working with XR, which is a virtual or an augmented reality company to expand the digital, uh, digital art augmented reality tourism app to various points of interest in OEV to be active in 2021. All of these initiatives have been the focus because we believe that they could in, in some way provide support to businesses through and beyond COVID construction and the increased street activity along Dundas Street. One of the most significant challenges since business reopening in June has been the increase of street involved activity along the commercial corridor. Many businesses have reached out to the office to share their concerns for the people on the street, as well as for the impact of the street activity on their business and, and overall safety of the area. As we know, this is and has been an ongoing challenge for the area over the years, but by all accounts, the impacts of concentrated services in our area and the number of folks in need has become acute. We have been working with the City of London Community Informed Response staff to facilitate meetings with area business and property owners to discuss and share the impacts of the increased street activity on their staff, their volunteers, customers, and their buildings. 
I have met with Jesse Helmer, our ward counselor, monthly about these and other challenges related to COVID. And most recently, I toured Lynn Livingston, city manager, London's top bureaucrat, along the corridor, introducing her to both amazing businesses, amazing not-for-profits, our outstanding foot patrol team, and the ongoing reality of urban camping along Dundas and all that is associated. This advocacy for you will continue as long as, as necessary. If you are a business that is experiencing problems and has not yet reached out for a meeting to discuss your ongoing challenges, I encourage you to do so. All, uh, all of our contact information can be found at oldiesvillage.com or on our Dig OEV Facebook page. B2B is another business support. It stands for Back to Business. This is a City of London initiative that is to provide effective business supports in order to best respond to the needs during COVID. We are currently working with this group to devise a process for businesses to access our municipal lots for events and promotions during 2021 construction. Most recently, the BIA utilized this to allow for sidewalk activity during the very successful Lemon Clay Art Sale and Somerville 630 soft opening on October 3rd, and more recently, the Artist Studio Tour last weekend. Through B2B and the City CIR program, businesses were supported with a variety of actions to make the area and Dundas Street welcoming to all of those who attended the events. We have heard very positive feedback about from area businesses about the distinct increase in shoppers along Dundas during these days. We will continue to work with B2B, CIR, and the London Police to ensure that area events are as successful as possible. Specifically regarding COVID uh, re um, recovery and action, um, as Jesse had mentioned, I was a part of the Mayor's Task Force early on uh, in the pandemic, and now it has transitioned into the London Community Recovery Network. Um, I am the co-lead on the core area recovery, and I'm also a table member at the strengthening collaborative efforts amongst business organizations and government. That is a mouthful. And really what I feel it boils down to is, is how could we identify additional supports for small business and business in general in the city. So I will be contacting all businesses next week to request your feedback into both of these recovery objectives. And please, no idea is too great or too small. All ideas are welcome, so I hope you engage with me to provide your perspective and needs regarding the long-term recovery of your business, the area, and the city. We are always looking forward and planning regarding development, support, and promotion of OEV. Here's what's coming up in 2021. We have a lot of different uh, development projects and infrastructure projects. There will be, uh, they will be moving into next steps and there will likely be some more public meetings. Uh, so please stay tuned for those. We will make sure that we get notices out. We don't do this work alone. These are some of our key partners, but this list is not exhaustive. We have two things to look out for in the new year. Uh, we will be working with Libro Credit Union, thank you Libro, as a collaborative partner to create with the BA direct support to OEV business promotion in early next year. And we are working, um, and as an organization, we're working on a project plug into OEV. It is something we are working on to connect with large area employers to encourage their staff to be active OEV shoppers and supporters. Stay tuned for information on both of these. The BIA will continue to use every avenue to seek support and policy that will assist with the ongoing revitalization of the area at all levels of government. We will leave no stone unturned. However, I would like to send special thanks to all of the city staff from the various departments that assist us every day, both through COVID construction and since the early days of the revitalization. I would also like to say thank you to our board, to our board chair, Maria Drangova, who I am suspicious may have a clone to be able to do all the things she does. Uh, I welcome our newest board members and look forward to working with you. Uh, and I have the greatest amount of gratitude for our past treasurer and board chair, Ken Keene. He retired this summer, but he was an invaluable asset to the board, myself and the area's mission. Enjoy retirement, Ken. You spent 20 years on the board and you are worthy of a vacation. We'll keep in touch, definitely. Finally, I wanna give a big thanks to the BI staff. It's not always easy in our office, but we put our heads down and come up with work I think we can be proud of. I hope you as a membership agree, but if you don't, that's okay. 
It is key for the BIA to hear from you regularly with both concerns and successes. We welcome your insights because you are the revitalization drivers and we are here to support you. Unfortunately, we lost a really good one this fall. Brad Ashton Haste was an OEB personality, a volunteer for the BI board, a corridor staple. His family and friends are keeping the shop open. So please stop in, support the shop and support Brad's legacy. A celebration of Brad's life will be held at a future date. However, donations in his memory can be made to the St. Thomas Animal Aid or the Canadian Diabetes Association. And now I'm pleased to introduce area resident and fan, acclaimed singer songwriter, Marty Coles. Hi, my name is Marty Coles and I'm a very proud member of the Old East Village community. I've been living in the neighborhood now for about 10 years and stumbled upon the neighborhood about 20 years ago when I got lost uh, on one of my first shopping expeditions to look for thrift stores in London, Ontario. I came across some Goodwill and um, I think it was Salvation Army stores at the time and fell in love with the neighborhood. Um, very happy to be here. I've been very happy to be in my warm and comfortable home during this time of COVID. And this was one of the songs that I wrote during that time. Thank you, Marty. 
Um, you're not hearing this in, in person, but uh, thank you to you and, and, and to all our musical acts. This was lovely. It's amazing how um, a, a few short musical videos can, can really uh, make even a, a, a Zoom meeting um, exciting and, and fun and, and feel like, like a community again. So this was well done. Um, so uh, we've managed to do this in almost, almost under an hour. Uh, we started a couple of minutes late, so we, we are doing uh, very well. This does bring us to an end. Uh, before I let you all go home or stay home and, and go and do something different than staring at your computer, I do want to thank you all for, for coming uh, to the meeting. Um, it's really an important role uh, that, that you play in the community. We thank you for everything that you do in the community. Um, I. I don't want to let you go before I thank uh, Jen and, and Nicole and Kylie and Gabrielle for all the amazing work they have done uh, putting this together. Uh, you always do an amazing job doing what you do. Um, and it tells you how much one can do when we have staff. I, I shudder to think of what it would have been like uh, had COVID hit when uh, we had a staff of one and a half um, and not the amazing team with it that we do now. Um, it has been a, a difficult year, uh, but what you've been able to achieve really shows resilience and, and commitment. And if we were in uh, a real venue, I think there'd be some standing up going on right now and a lot of clapping. So uh, thank you all. Uh, so for everybody else on the call, um, I do urge you if you were the lucky winners of 50 construction dollars, Please, please use them before the end of the year. Uh, there's no better way of telling the city that the effort they're making uh, is really paying off and the businesses that accept the dollars uh, will greatly appreciate it. Um, everybody could, could use an extra hand. If uh, you didn't get $50, uh, shop OEV, um, just the same. And uh, um, given all the effort we have put into the social media, um, sites, the Instagram, the GoVV, uh, Facebook page. Uh, please like us, uh, go there and, and express your support. Uh, it goes a long way to bringing people uh, down and supporting our uh, real businesses. So I, I can't say much more than uh, stay healthy and let's hope that next year we're able to meet in, in person but in the meantime, continue to support your neighbor and uh, support the old, Oldies Village BIA. Thank you all and, and good night. Bye-bye.